All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Meals and Adur Will. In citations and blessings to Akim that are pushing his word with truth, sincerity, and charity, and risk your lives to do so. And first and foremost, the name of the, of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, Jehovah, Yahweh, and many other false names. His only true name is Yahweh. Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. And Baha Shem, meaning in the name. Ba in ha da shem the name, which is the only way to get to the Heavenly Father, which is through his only begotten Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai, which means he saves or he delivers. And that only pertains to you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are the biblical Hebrew Israelites, no matter what you believe, and you speckle birds. That uh, may look like the other nations, like a so-called white person or a so-called Chinese person, so on and so forth. But your seed line, who your father is, goes back to a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native American. That will make you an Israelite because you are what, uh, what your father is, according to his numbers, 1 to verse 18. And it's uh, told by your spirit, you know, by your spirit that uh, if you are a child of Yahweh Bashem al -Shah, and the Rakha Kodash is the Holy Spirit. Rakha Spirit Kodash Kodash Holy, which is uh, how we are able to do these lessons, go out on the highways and bad ways, and ultimately do the wheel of Yahweh Bashem Al Shah. It's all done through the Rakha Kodash, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Angels. So uh, today I want to get into this lesson. Touching on this video I had seen earlier, uh, some words, you know, Donald Trump said, about uh, George Washington and many other um, figures in American history, because now it's shameful spewing upon Esau Edom's glory. So I'm gonna just play this. Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we gonna take down? Excuse me. Are we going to take down? Are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're we going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people. And I'm not talking about the neo Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Right, George so Washington see, was a slave owner. He was speaking on the history of, of, uh, of America, all right? The, you know, big figures of this place, you know, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson, so on and so forth. You know, many of these uh, these Edomite idols, you know, so to speak, icons, you know, these Edomite icons that people look up to and love so much and, and call, you know, the, the founding fathers, they, they were slave owners. They were uh, part of the destruction of our nation, of so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you know, our trauma, our, you know, this, this hell that we're, that we're in right now is their fault. Okay, and they want to try to sweep that shit up under the rug and try to forget about it and point the finger at, at other people and other cultures. But hey, look, look, look at what's going on here in Babylon, the Great America. You know, look at look at America's history. Nothing but blood, man. Nothing but blood. A um, a, a motherfucker who got a whole holiday, Cristobal Cologne, known as Christopher Columbus, has a whole holiday. And he did nothing but kill uh, the tribe of Gad, which are you so-called Native Americans, what this world ignorantly calls you, but you are the tribe of Gad, okay? But, um, you know, hey, they, they, this, dude, this dude didn't do nothing but kill. The Edomites that was with him did nothing but kill, rape the, the uh, so-called Native, Native tribes, man. And these things are still going on to this day, still oppressing our people. Still, hey, the, the same people oppressing the same people, man. And we supposed to forget about this and sweep this under the rug? No, it's impossible. You will pay for what you have done, Esau Edom. And that's, and that's 
every single last one of you. And actually, uh, I'm going to start with this Genesis. Because all the way from the, from the blood of Abel, this man always been killing the righteous. Always had a vendetta against the righteous because he ain't right. He can't do right. So <laughs> he want to, he, he, he jealous. He want to put, he, he want to uh, kill you instead of just doing what's right, man. Well, I'm going to read this because hey, the Lord is going to get you for every single uh, shed of blood of the righteous. Because the Lord said, don't touch this man. Well, um, I'm going to just start at one. I might jump around, but let's see. This is Genesis 4 and 1. It says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from Yahweh. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a, keep, was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tilder of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought other fruit, of the ground uh, and offering unto Yahweh, which it doesn't go on off because the Lord doesn't accept uh, fruit offering. He wants he wants uh, he wants uh, your cattle. Your, your it's gonna read. It's gonna go into it. Your flock it says verse four. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And um, you know to prove that. Is in Leviticus, uh, let me see, should be one and one. Yeah, this is Leviticus chapter one and verse one. It says, And Yahweh called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, which shows you this is only for Israelites only. It says, And say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto Yahweh, Ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. So of your cattle, of your herd, of your flock. That's what you're supposed to offer up to Yahweh Shem Shai. Not fruit. Not what you want to do. But what the Lord tells you to do. And he, he, he couldn't meet that task because he's wicked. He's off. He's, he's, he's estranged from the Lord, man. So it says... Genesis uh, 4 and verse 5 says, and unto, and unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance uh, fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? So if he did well, if he did the correct thing to, uh, according to what Yahweh told him to do, he would be accepted by the Lord. But they, the Lord didn't want it that way. He, he chose Abel and rejected Cain the same way he did with Esau and Jacob. He put away uh, J uh, Esau and he chose Jacob. He loved Jacob and he hated Esau. And they, this is a, um, you know, a, a, a reincarnation of them. Because Cain is, a, a, you know, well, Esau is a reincarnation of Cain and Jacob is a reincarnation of Abel. Same story, you know, a uh, similar story. It says, yeah, and unto thee shall, and, and unto thee shall be his desire. No, uh, it's like, it says, and if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, his brother, and slew him. So Cain couldn't couldn't meet the task. He couldn't do the right things. He couldn't serve Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. He couldn't follow righteousness. So what? Now uh, he 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 is he is that ruler of wickedness. He is the wicked. He is that wicked one, as the scriptures uh, call him, as the Lord told him in, in verse seven, but he didn't hearken. So it said. Verse 9, and Yahweh said unto Cain, Where is A with thy brother? And he said, I, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And we are supposed to be our brother's keeper. He's supposed to watch after uh, one another. He's supposed to have love for one another. But that just shows you that he's a, he, he's a nigga. He's wicked. He's off. 
So it says, verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. So he, what, he, put, he put his brother to death because he couldn't do what was right. And that's the same way with these damn devils, man. Starting with, with the least devil to the, to, the, to the top one, to the greatest one, to the most uh, renowned one. They all have put their hands upon Jacob. They all have some form of hatred for Jacob. It says that he has a perpetual hatred for us. So from, from the serpent, really, from the serpent all the way to, to right now, this man has always had a hatred for us. So it says, uh, verse 12, uh, verse 11, it says, And now art thou cursed from the earth, uh, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tiltest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A, fug a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And that's exactly what Esau Edom is. Because he has to go around and steal other people's resources, other people's cultures, okay, and, and, and put them all upon himself. You know, he likes to have that, that great melting pot because he's a nobody. And the Lord cursed him. Say, hey, made, made him a fugitive, man. He was he's always gonna be on the run. He can never, you know, just be just be cool because he's a murderer. And the Lord cursed him with, with a uh, curse of um of leprosy. Took away his pigmentation. It says verse 13. And Cain said unto Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast uh, driven me out. This day from the face of the earth and from thy face shall shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And Yahweh said, now this, uh, this is the point. And Yahweh said unto him, therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark upon Cain lest any finding him should kill him, okay? And so, point is, Yahweh Shemal Shah put a mark upon Cain. <clears throat> it's like, not a, a mark, but um, the Lord is going to take vengeance on this man. So, from all of the wickedness that he has done, hey, as I said, you know, from the serpent to Cain to Esau, so on and so forth, all the wickedness that this man has done, man, it's all going to come back on him. Because the Lord is, is, is putting that on his tab, just continuously adding that on his tab. All the wickedness that he's doing is, is, is just, hey, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And I'm going to get his uh, his son, his son, his son for everything that they have done, man. So, and uh, let me get this just to prove that. Because the Lord is, hey, the Lord is always go. he's always got his eye on Esau Edom, man. And he's always gonna he, he says he's gonna have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So you're never gonna get away from uh Yahweh Bashem al Shah. The Lord is always gonna have a hatred for you and always gonna be seeking to destroy you. And that's what's gonna come to Esau in the end. So it says verse 24: If Cain shall be avenged, uh let me see. Let's get the contest. 23. It says, Elamech, which uh this is one of the sons of Cain, you know, one of his uh grandsons, it says, and Lamech said unto his wives, Adah and Zella, hear my voice, ye wives of, of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. So what are you going to brag, you know, growing forth bragging about murder, <laughs> which is what these niggas do. Brag about murder, he rap, make songs about it. This nigga doing the same shit, man. These niggas following after the ways of Esau, you know. But wait, he, he was a murderer, just like Cain. Just like his father. It says, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So, hey, the Lord is saying, don't touch this man. Don't touch him. I'm going to take care, take care of him. And when the Lord takes care of him, it's going to be, it's going to be the worst the worst slavery to ever be in the slavery of, of, of history, period. 
It's going to be a slavery with spiritual powers, man. We're going to be able to do anything and everything we want to do to you, to you, uh, heathen. Starting with Esau, Edom, you know, hey, just as, uh, this dude Donald Trump said, you know, hey, uh, uh, George Washington was a, was a, was a major slave owner, Thomas Jefferson, a major slave owner, so on and so forth. You know, you can only imagine the things that, that these fucking devils have done to our people. You can only imagine. They don't tell you all the things that they, that they have done. They have done some horrible, horrible things from, you know, as far as we know of, man. We're going to continue to speak on these things because Esau wants to get rid of this. He wants to get, he get, get rid of the history. You know, they call it a critical critical race theory. No, this is a this is a fact. These are things that actually happened. These are things that you really did. So-called white people really did this, man. Ain't no hiding this shit. Y'all did this. <laughs> Say no theory. This is facts. This is Revelation 13 and 9. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. So if you have an ear of wis for wisdom and understanding, if you can hear uh, in the spirit, he that lead it into captivity shall go into captivity because you have a lot of Edomites and a lot of people who believe, oh, well, that's, that's in the past. Eh, get over it. This have slavery happened to, to everybody, but hey, you, no slavery has, has been as bad as what has happened to us so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And let me prove that. Because the things that we have went through, no nation has ever been through it, man. So you people can say whatever the fuck you want, you, whatever you want to say, it don't matter. Because <laughs> the truth is the truth. Ain't nobody went through what we went through. Uh, let me see. Uh, bear with me. Yeah, this is uh, Daniel 9 and verse 12. It says, and he have confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath, uh, hath not been done as have been done unto Jerusalem. So no nation ha has ever went through, you know, uh, more worse slaveries and, and, and atrocities than the nation of Israel. We continuously go through uh, slaveries and <clears throat> and hardships as a nation because the Lord is always judging us and, you know, trying to set us right and keep us in order, man. So he chastens our nation, you know. So we're constantly going through things. And and, and even worse, you know, we, we get the, the worst punishments. No one has ever went through what uh, our people have gone through, man. So you people can't say, oh, yeah, well, uh, everyone has gone through slavery. Well, hey, we, we're the children of, uh, of Yahweh Bashem al Shah, so you're going to pay for touching us. You're going to pay for doing all, all the, the weird-ass fucking bullshit you and did to us. It's changing our names, taking our names away, bug-breaking men, so on and so forth. Like This dude is a, is a, is a complete and utter freak, man. A total, uh, just the wicked. He's just the wicked, man. He do the most wickedest things you can possibly think of. So he, he has to pay for what he has done. It says, Revelation 13 and 10, says, He that lead it into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what the righteous is patiently waiting for. For this man to go down, for this man to go into slavery, for him to pay for what he has done. You got to pay for what you did, man. You don't just get away with doing all this, this crazy, wicked-ass shit to our people and then still oppressing us to this day. To this day, still oppressing us, man. You don't act like you, you he done just, you know, been the most nicest, you know, uh, pleasant motherfucker to us ever since he just, you know, so-called let us free. We can't, we ain't free. We ain't even got our own land. We got to pay rent. We, 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 we under your subjection. We got to go to your jobs. Clock in for you, pay your pay taxes to you. We ain't got our own shit, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man. This dude gotta pay. And you will pay. Because the Lord says so. He that leads to captivity shall go into captivity. You led us into, into captivity, you're gonna go into captivity. 
your kings and your nobles touched us. Y'all, y'all did, uh, you know, atrocities and 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 vow lacks to us. Y'all gonna pay for that? Says you're gonna get double, and that cup that that you, uh, you know, that we're drunk. You're gonna you're gonna drink of that cup. You're gonna get slavery. It says Psalms 149, and verse five. It says, "Let the let the saints be joyful, in glory. Let them sing upon their beards." And this is after. Uh, Yahweh Shai has delivered us and saved us from this hell that we in, and and from the hands of our oppressors. It says, let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand, and 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 after their destruction as well, after the destruction of these of these heathen nations, we're gonna praise Yahweh Shai. We're gonna thank the Lord. Hey, um, let me get this. And they said that we're gonna have a two-edged sword in our hand. That's literal. We're gonna literally have a sword in our hand. A, a cutting down you heathens, judging y'all heathens, man. Uh, yeah, putting judgment on y'all for what y'all have done. So you're gonna pay, and then hey, we can put your body right back together and do it and do it again if we want to do that. And that's the power that the Lord is gonna give us. We're gonna patiently wait on Yahweh and Shane. He's gonna give us that power to do that, man. It said that um, we're gonna we're gonna uh, beat you into shivers. We're gonna break you as a potter's vessel. He seems, hey, this was coming to you, heathen. Or this Revelation 18. And, yeah. Revelation 18 and 20 says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Yahweh hath avenged you on her. And this is after uh, Babylon and great America is, is, is destroyed. You know? We're going to, and, you know, we're beamed up and we're saved and we're looking and seeing the destruction of America. We're going to be praising the Lord. It says, verse 21, And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great meal stone, and cast it into the sea. And this is uh, nu those nuclear missiles being cast into Babylon the Great, hitting these people, which uh, the people represent the sea, according to uh, the 17th chapter. All right, the people represent the sea. And that angel is going to lead those missiles and into Babylon and Great America, into judging the wicked. All of you wicked people, you two third niggas here in this land, two thirds uh, are, are um, all here in Babylon and Great America, and they're gonna get judged. That's that sea. These heathens that's here, they're gonna get burnt up here. It says, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down. And shall be found no more at all. So Babylon is going to be thrown down with violence. Which is nuclear missiles. That's the way this place is going out. That's the, place, that's the way our enemies are going to go out. And we're going to get beamed up in the midst of our enemies. In the face, in the face of our enemies, we're going to get saved. Hey, some of us may be in, in, in uh, concentration camps. Some of us may be before judges. So on and so forth, man. Some of us may be on the run, whatever. But we're gonna we're gonna see our enemies uh get destroyed and our enemies are gonna see us get saved. It says Revelation eleven and verse twelve. It says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So hey, well, the Lord is gonna call us up into heaven. Through his uh, chariots, his so-called UFOs, and we're going to get beamed up right before the destruction comes. It says that uh, the righteous are going to be scarcely saved. We're going to get beamed up right before the destruction comes and the midst of our enemies, in the face of our enemies. And they're going to get blown to smithereens right before us. Verse 13, it says, in the same hour, so as we're going to beamed up, they're going to be getting destroyed. It says, in the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the third part, and that's that, uh, that great millstone. And it hits the earth, it's going to cause a great earthquake. That, that ICBM nuclear missile is going to cause a great earthquake. It says that the earth is going to rail to and fro. And then what? It says, and the third part of the city fell, which uh, it's like in the tenth part of the city fell. And the earthquake, uh, it's like, yep, it says, and the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, which is a complete number 
of men being destroyed, a number of men that were set for destruction. It's people who are, you know, set for destruction and people who are set for salvation. It says, so hey, if you can't get this truth, that, that doesn't mean that you, you were meant to never understand it. It says, and the remnant were affrighted because it says we're going to scarcely be saved. You know, I say uh, by, the, by the skin of your teeth. That's how it's going to be. As, as that destruction is coming, we're going to be getting saved, man. Damn, that's, that's heavy. But it says, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to Yahweh of heaven. We're going to praise Yahweh Bashem al Shai as we're saved. And we're in this place is destroyed, man. We, we're going to praise the Lord. This man, because it's going to be so, like, ah, like, damn, man, fuck. You know that it's gonna be a major adrenaline rush. We're gonna be we're gonna be changed. No longer gonna feel a pain, no more sorrow anymore. And then we're gonna be able to take the, uh, you know, put that pain on our on our enemies. That all that pain we felt, we're gonna put it on y'all. All that slavery we felt, that 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 mental anguish, all that shit is gonna be put on y'all, man. Sicknesses we feel, and we still gotta push through it. Hey, y'all gonna feel that. All of you heathen. Says Psalms 1, 149 and 6. It says, Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. This is, hey, yeah, this is coming out the Bible, man. Hey, the Lord is a man of war. And he's bringing war on you heathen. He says he's gonna have war with Amalek from generation to generation. He's always going to fight with you heathen. He's always going to let us get our licks in on y'all heathen, just like uh, uh, he did in the time of King David, in the time of the kings. Throwing Edomites off cliffs, putting Edomites in, in captivity, putting garrisons in y'all lands, man. All, that com all that's coming back. Times, times a thousand, though. Because <laughs> hey, as, as I said, we're going to be ruling with spiritual powers, as the scriptures say. We're going to rule with spiritual powers, man. We're going to be gods. We're going to be kings. It says we're going to be like Yahweh Shai. We're going to be glorified with him. Total gods, man. Flying. Running, never getting tired. Uh, power over the elements. Like, come on, man. You eating is done for. <laughs> says, uh, and, and yeah, we don't want no, no reparations. None of that. Y'all keep all that, man. We don't want no apologies. That none of that shit is gonna none of that, none of that matters at the end of the day. None of that matters. None of that's gonna help and do anything for us. Oh, I'm so sorry that we did that to you. I'm so sorry that we destroyed your people. <laughs> we don't we don't want that, man. We want blood. This is numbers 35 and 33. And this way Yahweh Bashan al Shai declared his righteousness. It says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So the blood is going to have to be shed. Uh, uh, Edomite blood is going to have to be shed. And the way it's going to be shed is by ICBM nuclear missile fire. Destruction and slavery. The, the main thing is slavery. <laughs> but your destruction as well, man. The destruction of... Of uh, the stronghold, Babylon the Great America, Basra, and all you Edomites in it. This is um, Isaiah 34 and verse 4. And the only one that's going to escape, you know, is, is destruction. Is you, uh, you kings, these rich men, and, you know, people who are not here in America. If you are here in America, you are, you are you're fucking done for. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to get baked here. It's going to be an oven. I don't care if you got the deepest underground bunker. This place is going to be broken up. It says Isaiah 34 and verse 4. And it says it's going to be turned to a lake of fire. It says, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a, as a scroll, which that's that nuclear missile. It's that nuclear missile, man. You look at a scroll, a scroll that's rolled together, it looks like a mushroom cloud. So that's how the prophet Isaiah described it. That's how he seen the mushroom cloud. When that uh, nuclear missile hit ground zero, that's, uh, you know, and, and it lets off that, um, that uh, I forget, that nuclear fallout. And, and it looks like a mushroom cloud. 
Okay, and you're not gonna be able to see the the sun, the the moon. Nothing. It it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, dark in that day, because of how many missiles are gonna hit Babylon and Great America. It says, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf fall it fall it off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. So it, those missiles are gonna go up into the atmosphere and come back down, and and, and hit this land. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse through judgment. So, the, so this is the people that is cursed before Yahweh al Shai and always will be, according to that, uh, that curse of Cain, which it came back upon Esau Edom. Esau didn't, didn't just come out without pigmentation for no reason. That, that's the curse of Cain, man. That's the curse of the wicked. That's an indication that he is the wicked. He is that wicked one. And that's all he's done. He's went for it. And, and it pushed nothing but wickedness, man. From the from the fucking moment that this dude came at the womb, it says that the, that the man. Let me get it. The moment the moment Esau came at the womb, he was he was he was going for it doing wickedness. We were fighting in the womb, man. <laughs> we were fighting in the womb, and I guarantee you, Esau started that shit. This nigga's the fucking wicked. Um, what is it? Let me see. Fifty three. It might be. They are estranged from the womb. Uh, let me see. Go with them. It's Psalms 58 and verse 3. It says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go, they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. And that's all Esau even does. As soon as he goes forth, he just pushing nothing but wickedness. He's doing nothing but wickedness. He's been doing that ever since, uh, ever since his creation, because he is the wicked, according to Malachi one and four, and according to all the actions that he has done in the scriptures. He he he's the wicked man. You can't tell me that this man ain't wicked. It says Isaiah thirty four and verse six. It says the sword of Yahweh is filled with blood, and that's that that nuclear missile. When it hits this place, it is, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy you Edomites. And it's not just going to be a quick boom and you're just gone. Or you're going you're gonna to burn in, in this fire. Like you're literally going to torment. You're going to be in torture, tormenting in this fire, man. It says, it is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, uh, with the fat of kidneys of rams, for Yahweh have to sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So you people are, are, are like sacrifices to Yahweh Bashem al Shai. Your blood is going to be shed. And what do you do with a sacrifice? You burn it. So you people are going to be burning. You're going to be burnt up. All right, right upon this altar, which is Babylon and Great America, Egypt. This altar. It says, And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked. With blood and their and their dust made fat with fatness, so they just going into those sacrificial animals. You're 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 likened to that. You people are likened to sacrificial animals. You're gonna be burnt up. You're gonna be you're gonna be dust before the Lord. It says, for it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance, and the year of His recompense for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. So just showing you that this is talking about something that's going to burn an entire land. What, what, what's going to do that? A, a nuclear missile. This is a nuclear missile going to burn the entire land. The Lord likens you to sacrificial animals. You're going to get burnt up right upon this altar, Babylon, the Great America. And then the Lord describes it, tells you that it's going to be burning pitch. Okay? It's going to be brimstone. This place is going to be burnt up, man. Verse 10. And it shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke, the smoke thereof, which is fire, right? Shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. And how do we know that this is talking about Babylon the Great? Because it tells you the same exact thing in Revelation, the 14th chapter. Okay? Same exact thing. Plus, it says gonna, it's never going to be quenched is a day nor night, forever, which means a very, very long time. 
Which, hey, that's how long you people are gonna burn in this fire. For the for the wickedness that has done that uh, that you have done upon Jacob, Revelation fourteen. And uh, yeah, I saw it nine. It says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his his uh, M A R K in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture." Into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with the fire and the brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. So this is a uh, Babylon the Great. Okay, if you holding on to your, uh, you know, following the ways of this system and the ways of Esau, Edom, Moism, and 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 bestiality, and all the other things that this man has pushed, just do as thou wilt, pretty much. Do as thou wilt. Do whatever you want to do. You know, it, it just just follow sin. Just follow sin, man. That's that's uh, Esau Edom's image. And if you're following that, you're you're taking. You know, you ultimately take the MOTB. You're gonna get burnt up by by Yahweh Bashem Al Shine. That's being first and foremost to you Israelites, because you heathen and you you can do whatever you want to do. You know, you are you are a real natural born heathen. Take the MOTB, follow Esau, live it up, live your life. Because at the end of the day, you're you're going to suffer regardless. It don't matter, man. The only ones who got a chance is the Israelites. And two-thirds of our people are not going to make it either. So, hey, if you just want to follow after this place, hey, be my guest. Do you. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. But hey, we're, we're seeking after the elect, first and foremost, which is why we do these lessons. But it says, verse 11, you know, hey, we just set to warn. It says, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And... They have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receive it, the M-A-R-K of his name. So just going back to this Isaiah 30, uh, 34, you know, the Isaiah 34 that it lines up with um, this Revelation 14, which showing you that it's speaking of the same place. OK, the prophets saw the same uh, type of visions. You know, it's, it's, it's always going back to the destruction of Esau, Edom. that's just the end all be all, man. It says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. That's that's the end of the, of the rulership of the heathen. And then that's when we're going to rule. That's when we're going to be at the top. That's what Ezra was asking. When are we going to be at the top? That's what all, that's what all the, the ancient prophets, the ancient Israelites was always worried about. We don't fucking care about the heathen, man. It's some bullshit that Esau done put in your head to try to make you all mushy and... and, and, and you know, and all loving. No, we, the Lord don't want us to be that way. The Lord wants us to be separate from these nations. We are a holy people. These people are fucking vow wicked. Okay. In every way, in every fashion, <laughs> every way, in every fashion, you can think about these people. Are, <laughs> these people are just are, are disgusting, man. True. And we're supposed to be separate. Hey, the El Yashuama did a lesson uh, saying that, um, being an Israelite, uh, being an Israelite comes with a responsibility. So hey, when you're called out to the name of the Lord, hey, that that comes with a responsibility, man. You can't you can't just be a nigga. You just can't be a scumbag. You just can't, you know, be a low life and do whatever the hell you want to do. Be a mo, so on and so forth. You got to actually walk with some uh, with some class with righteousness. But uh, um, let me get this. Yeah, let me finish this. This is Psalms 149 and verse 8. It says, To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the, vent, the, the judgment written, dishonor have all his saints, praise ye Yahweh. So hey, what, uh, he that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. And this is what Esau has done. And yeah, you're going to start with your kings. Your kings are going to pay. And all the rest of you Edomites are going to pay. You're going to reincarnate into the kingdom. And then you're going to wake up in slavery. <laughs> okay? The only ones that's getting away is, is the kings of these nations. Because they're going to uh, hide in the, in the mountains. As it says in Revelation, the sixth chapter. To try to hide from the Lord. But Jeremiah 16 and 16 says, hey, hey what? We're going to seek them out. I'm going to end on this. I was just flowing in the spirit, you know, but this is uh, Jeremiah 16 and verse 16. It says, behold, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to read 14, read down. 
It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, said Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh Bashem Shai liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, because in this time, Yahweh Shai is going to come back and deliver, deliver us from the land of the north. And his name will be glorified uh, throughout the four corners of the, of, the, of the earth, man. As it says in Philippians, the second chapter, every knee shall bow. Everyone is going gonna, is gonna to bow to Yahweh Shai and praise Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Which is the way that uh, you're going to worship Yahweh. But it starts with Yahweh Shai. Because that glorification and the destruction and downfall of the wicked is going to come through Yahweh Shai. And the... Uh, you know, an, an angelic force that's going to come with him, man. It's the way that the children of Israel are going to be saved. And ultimately, this is going to <laughs> cause the earth to flourish again. It cause the earth to be in prosperity. When Yahweh Shai is ruling, because it says that when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. So all the people are mourning right now because the wicked is ruling. You saw Edom. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Job 9 and 24. Okay? But it says that when the righteous bear the rule, the people rejoice. And when we bear rule, everyone is, no one is going to be at war fighting anymore. Everything is going to be at peace. So it says, but, Yah but Yahweh lived that brought, uh, Yahweh Hashem Shai lived that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands, whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So the land that, that you know, we have, the land of Israel, which is going to be expanded as well. But uh, the land of Israel that <coughs> our forefathers have, we're going, to, we're going to get our land back. We're going to get our land back, and then we're going to get other lands as well added on to us. Okay? Which that means that the imposters that's over there, they're going to be destroyed up out of that land, and then, and then the land of Israel is going to be rebuilt. rebuilt. It says, Behold, and it's going to be rebuilt by you heathen. Okay, starting with Esau, Edom, it's going to be rebuilt by you because we, we ain't lifting a damn finger, man. Y'all go do all the heavy heavy lifting. The only time we lifting a finger is to bash y'all ass over the head with a sword. <laughs> but it says, verse 16, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And, and, and after, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill. And out of the holes of the rocks. So going back to the point that, you know, these kings and the rulers of this world, they're going to hide. And the rich men of this world are going to hide in, in the holes of the rocks and, and in the hills and the mountains. You know, and they already have dug out mountains, you know, and, and, and places like Russia and all these other places around the world. They already dug these places out. which just shows you that the whole world is not going to be on fire and burnt up and everything is going to be destroyed, man. It, it, only certain parts are going to get hit with nukes and be totally destroyed. But there's going to be other parts where these heathens, you know, these rulers, they're going to hide and, and, and get away from the destruction. But hey, the Lord is going to put the spirit on his on his fishers, all right, the prophets, turn us into hunters, give us spiritual powers, turn us into gods, man. We're going to go forth and we're going to hunt you heathens. We're going to break into your, your underground bunkers. And we're going to round you up and we're going to put you into slavery. And we're going to do unto you as it was done unto us. Times, times two with spiritual powers. So, hey, I pray this lesson was edifying. I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to our elders and apostles of great meals, and Adura Well. And salutations and blessings to you, I come down pushing this word with truth, sincerity, and charity. Shalom and Kwam Yashra Allah.